welcome back Waltham High to another episode of News Now. Filling in for Taylor Pinzone, I'm Regina Silvera. And I'm Stephen Jardina. Don't forget to bring your pajamas for the pajama drive to help children in need. They can be brought to room 144 or the senior house office. Even though Halloween has passed, Carr and Val research insane asylums, haunted houses, and cemeteries. Let's see what they had to say about it. I'm interested in insane asylums for a couple different reasons. First, I think I have kind of just a morbid fascination because um, while many of these places started out as beautiful places, utopias, um, they ended up being corrupt, overcrowded, horrible things were perpetrated in these places. Um, and I have to say, I find it kind of fascinating in a sick way. My own family. I had somebody in my family that had a lobotomy, and it was my grandmother's sister, and I never knew her, um, but I heard the stories growing up, and I think that that kind of like sparked my interest, like what is a lobotomy, and how does that happen, and why doesn't it happen anymore? And so that's kind of where my fascination came from. <laughs> When I started exploring just in Massachusetts what like kind of spooky haunted um, insane asylums uh, exist, I found there's plenty. I believe in it and I, I think, I mean, I definitely think that these things can happen. Um, I know that there are people, there are places in Massachusetts, like you've heard of um, Lizzie Borden. People go there and they have like recordings of like weird energy and have had paranormal experiences. And I, I don't know, I believe in that kind yeah. of stuff. And one of the biggest ones was in Danvers. Um, it was knocked down a couple years ago and redeveloped into condos. Who would want to live there? I'm not really sure, but... Um, the idea was the women would be on one side and the men would be on the other side, um, and they'd have common areas in the middle. And they built all these underground tunnels so that people could travel from one side of the building, like the staff could travel easily from one side to the other side. because They eventually, these places became kind of like prisons. Um, and then another really good one is um, that you can go visit is in Tewksbury. And they actually still take patients. They take some of, they have a small building that still operates, and they take some of the most extreme, severe cases. So people that have mental disorders but have committed crimes, and they end up there. I definitely think that these things can happen. Wow, spooky! Don't forget to buy a calendar to help raise money for the all night party. Have you seen the new additions to the Legacy Wall? Caitlin and I found out some more information. Thanks, Taylor. I'm here at the Legacy Wall on the first floor of Waltham High. Since its start last year, men and women who have made a considerable difference into the school community have been inducted. This year, Ms. Deb Finnell and Mr. Robert Eagle have been inducted for their extensive efforts in the Fine and Performing Arts program. Let's take a look. Um, I was thinking about ways to celebrate the legacy that people have left at Waltham High School and to show students you know, that they're, that they're part of something bigger. So we came up with this idea, and a lot of people rallied around it, so we in, in, uh, inducted a couple people last year, and it went very well, so we're very happy to have two additional members this year. My hope is that it will serve, as, as students walk by this hallway, will serve as an inspiration to them, and also highlight and, and, and inform them about some of the, uh, the big pieces of our institution that have been here for a long, long time. Have you seen the new additions to the Legacy Wall, and what do you think of it? Yeah, I really like uh, appreciate that Deb and Mr. Eagle finally get a spot, and it seems really nice. No, I haven't, but I'll make sure to check it out. Uh, yeah, I have, uh, but yeah, I think Deb deserves it. She does a lot for the kids. She's been here for about 50 years, so. Yeah, I've walked by it a few times, and it looks really nice. This is Debbie Perros Fennell. She started dance theater as a way to highlight some of the talent, some of the talented students she taught in her, her innovative dance classes. Say thank you so much. I'm so proud and honored, and and um, I was nothing without Bob Eagle, though, who gave me a passion for theater. And when I got to this high school, I said I want something dance. I, I would be nothing, and, and just knowing that the dance curriculum took off, too, and, we, and then Mr. Eagle built this wonderful dance studio. Yes, his tireless fundraising, but our kids, our Waltham kids, have a place to dance. And it's the voice of their generation, and we are one of the only high schools that have this. And, and I think it is kind of a quality product. I do. <laughs> I'm kind of proud about it. I shall live and die. At Waltham High. <laughs> it is my motto. In 1968, Bob Eagle began Senior Review as a variety show so that 
so that more seniors could be involved in the senior production. <laughs> English teacher and director of English and Drama at Waltham High School for many years. He was instrumental in having drama as part of all grades in Waltham Public Schools, K through 12, which that still continues today. Very, very <coughs> unique. Instrumental in the design of the Robinson Auditorium, which he's very proud of, that venue. Um, continues to promote and provide high quality productions for the Waltham, for the community, Waltham and the, and the greater community through Regal Music Theater, uh, which is known far and wide. Well, I used to do the event called the Senior Play for years, and what happened would there be maybe 12 to 15 seniors who were in the senior play and a few more behind the scenes. And it just seemed wrong that you could call it a senior activity when there were so few involved. So we started this idea. I'm very, very touched, very honored to be considered among these esteemed honorees and thank you all very much for coming. Hi, to have Alexi Wall. Uh, because I think there's a lot of teachers who need to be recognized for their work around the school. It shows uh, students like role models and like who to go to when they need help. I think it's nice to show the students like the people who have made a difference in the building so that all the hard work of the people gets recognized. Three, okay, one, two, two, three. three. Hey. Congratulations to the two new inductees for making their way onto the Legacy Wall. Be sure to check out the new additions on your way through the halls. Back to you in the studio, Stephen. Thanks, guys. Next Wednesday, November 25th, is an early dismissal at 1045. With Thanksgiving coming up, Stephen and Taylor looked back on the success of Fall Fest. Let's check it out. As you know, Fall Fest was a huge success this year. Let's go see how the kids of Walt Dam High enjoyed it. Uh, did you go to Fall Fest and what did you like about it? Yeah, I did, and I liked the alpacas. Yeah, yes, I did. I liked the cornhole toss the best. I did go to Fall Fest, and I loved how the animal farm brought the alpaca. Yes, I went to Fall Fest, and I loved the various activities they had there. They were a lot of fun. Uh, what was your favorite part about the whole thing? Um, watching Taylor kill it in the cornhole. <laughs> I like petting the goats. It was intriguing. Just having the whole community and everything being brought together and the music and the food. I love the petting zoo personally because I just like loved all the animals and the alpaca and everything. And would you go back next year and why? Uh, yeah, I would. It was really fun. Uh, if I'm back from college, yes, I'll go back just to support the freshman mentor program. Um, yeah, I would definitely go back. I mean, it would be great to see the school again since I'm a senior and I just like loved it. How do you think the turnout was for the first year of Fall Fest? Uh, for the first year, I think it was great. I think we had tons of people from the community, lots of students showed up, um, tons of faculty, so I couldn't have asked for a better turnout for our first year. What was your favorite part about the whole thing? Um, I really liked the cornhole tournament, and I also think that the petting zoo turned out to be a great hit, so I would go with those two. How difficult was it to put this whole thing together? Um, difficult or stressful? Uh, a lot, I guess, but... Um, the kids really worked together. Uh, we had a lot of really excited faculty about it, so um, I think overall it wasn't as hard as I was anticipating. Do you think it will be successful in uh, years to come? I hope so. Um, a lot's going to depend on how excited the kids get about it uh, and, and if we can continue to get the community involved. A lot of the elementary schools get them to come. Um, so it's just going to be about community outreach and how excited students are. The first Fall Fest was great. I can't wait for next year. Speaking of Thanksgiving, the culinary program is having their annual Thanksgiving bake sale on Wednesday, November 25th. I'll be sure to check out the baked goods. Coming up this week is Senior Review. Shelby and Ty checked in to see how the production is going. Every year, the seniors put on a show called Senior Review to commemorate their four years at Waltham High. We caught up with some of the stars and the director of the show, Deb Finnell, for some more information. What is your job as an MC? As an MC, it is my job to put on skits, open, close the show, and transition between dances. Um, as MCs, we're kind of like hosts. We keep the show moving and we tell what's coming up next and we introduce people. So my job as an MC is basically to run the show. It's me and nine others, um, five girls, five boys. The show is seasoned. So each MC will come out and do a little skit that 
transitions each season to season. What is rehearsal typically like? Rehearsal is kind of wild, but once everyone gets their stuff together and everyone gets gathered, it tends to be a fun time for everyone involved. The ten of us just meet with Mr. Burns and we talk about skits and we do funny stuff and if it's we like it, we keep it. Deb typically tries to make everything happen at the same time, but dances are usually more organized, but all everyone run through is, is crazy. I am Deb Fennell, director and choreographer of the class of 2016 Senior Review. Practices are typically horrible. I am like trying to talk over about 100 to 130 seniors all in one room that believe that they have to text, talk, twerk. Oh, they're doing a whole bunch of stuff, okay? Sometimes we actually sing, dance, and act, and it's a lot of fun, but, but rehearsals are stressful. Um, and I don't mind the fun, the fun is fun, but now it is time to get the show ready. Are you in any big musical numbers? I am in four dances other than I'm seeing. I'm actually in three couples dances. I'm in the two group dances, which everybody's in. Also, I'm in the boys dance. And I'm featured in a friend, Olivia Petipa. She has a dance and I'm featured in it. I'm in like this opening and closing, which is singing and dancing. What's your favorite? I would say Fun by Chris Brown and Pitbull because it's an all boys dance and it's high energy. I would say my favorite dance is the time of my life, time of our lives because it's just crazy. I kind of like the fight song one, but I'm in like the dance in the beginning of it, and I like not being able to sing the whole time. What is it like working with Deb? It's awesome. Deb is an, like a great dancer. She makes up awesome dances, so she's probably one of the best people to run the show. She's organized and she has everything done. It's it's kind of hard because she's it's only one person like trying to get all um, a lot of students doing what they're supposed to do and. A lot of screaming going on. I think you're going to expect a great show. Um, it, there's so much talent on that stage. There's so many surprises. There's no other way to say it. You have to come see it. Um, and I really can't pick a favorite number. I really enjoy so much of it. When they actually buckle down, they are a very gifted class. There's a, a large amount of them. And you will be so surprised at the diversity the kids that have, are taking this on upon their busy lives of work and sports and college applications. Um, and there's just a cross section of every single kind of kid in this school is actually on that stage. There is a show on Wednesday, November 18, and that's for the freshmen. That's our little preview. Thursday, um, November 19th, after school, 3.30. And Friday, November 20th, 7.30, night. So we kind of have a morning, noon, night. Be sure to see Senior Review this week. Back to you guys in the studio. The show looks good. I can't wait to see it. There's a 3D printing lesson tomorrow after school in the library. Recently, the WeTV program has developed a new website. Jillian and Rennie found out more information on it. Let's go have a look. Here in the TV program, we're always looking for ways to improve ourselves. Although we already have a YouTube page, Mr. Whiteley is working on a website to further promote our videos. We caught up with Mr. Whiteley and some students in the TV program to see what they're up to, as well as some of our viewers with some suggestions. Your last video being the High School Musical parody, how do you think it went overall? Overall, I think it went really well. Um, a lot of teachers got back to us and told us how amazing they thought we did. Uh, Mr. Hazel won't stop bragging about us. Um, so yeah, I think it re went really well. We have about almost a thousand views on YouTube, so. How do you think the production of the video went? Um, the production was pretty difficult because it's hard to get an entire class of people to really work together, especially since a lot of people have different ideas and they all want their ideas to be in the video. It's hard to tell people no and hard to make changes when it's like already in the script. Can you tell us more information about the new upcoming website? Currently we have the WeTV YouTube channel, which is where you can watch all the videos that are produced, the news, the music videos, um, any, most of the videos that our classes do depending on uh, how good they are or appropriate they are. Currently we're building a website that will keep people up to date on the goings on at WeTV. The, uh, the web page will have uh, you know, information about us, how to contact us, Mr. Hazel and myself. So if people have story ideas or videos that they want to create, they can contact us and see if we can work with them. Currently we're working with the police department to do a series of videos. Um, there's also links to the YouTube page and all the videos. There is a 
alumni page where we have uh, or where we will have alumni that work in the industry, uh, their bios and, and how they got to where they are and what they do now. What do you think about the WeTV YouTube channel? Oh, dude, I love it. I'm subscribed. Watch every video that happens. It's awesome. I'm very fond of it. And um, I love watching it every day after school when I get home. I think the WeTV YouTube channel is uh, it's pretty good. You can always find uh, what the TV class is up to on it. So that's pretty cool, I guess. Always fun things on there. Um, I like it. It has good videos. What would you like us to produce next? Um, something funny. Something to make me laugh. I think that'd be great. I think it'd be funny if you guys like reenacted Ted the movie and Ted too and make a three. I think I'd like to see more acting because uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the High School Musical thing they did and I want to see more of that. Could you do like cooking shows or something to do with food? Sounds like the website will be helpful and informative. Speaking of WeTV, last week students from Vermont visited to learn more about the television broadcasting. Katie and Haley got the scoop. We caught up with Mr. Rickles, a former WHS English teacher, to talk to him about his new TV class in Vermont. Well, I'm still an English teacher. Uh, that's my primary job. This is an ELA teacher. Um, but I was asked to teach an elective this year, and my instinct was to go with journalism as an idea, and in this day and age, print journalism and traditional journalism uh, isn't quite current, whereas TV production, video production, um, blogging, internet dissemination of, of information, uh, podcasting is the way to go. So I thought, I know where they have a great program in TV production. You guys have a great program here, um, really well established, uh, thorough, fantastic resources, um, you know, really solid students in TV uh, one, two, and three. And we have some kids that are already interested in this stuff, have some of these skills built in. Uh, and the plan is to make this a really student-centric class where the kids contribute a lot of ideas to what we'll do, what the projects will be, what the curriculum will look like. Why did you decide to get involved in a TV program? Uh, someone kind of came up with the idea at our school and I thought it seemed like a cool idea, plus I'm kind of looking at broadcast journalism, so I just thought it might be a cool thing to try out. Uh, because we have this thing called GM in the AM in the morning, it's kind of like a news program through the intercom, but we actually want to have people actually watch it, so we're kind of switching it up a little bit. Well, I've been doing a radio show for, I guess, five years now, um, and I've always been really interested in broadcasting and journalism and stuff like that, so it seemed like the natural progression. Well, I've always been a big fan of TV and movies and stuff, so sometimes it's more interesting to learn what's going on behind the scenes rather than what you just see, because there's a lot more than just two hours worth of work that goes into it. Miss Basinger had a lot to do with the idea, came up with the concept of doing a collaborative project to sort of teach my students uh, some of the basics and give them uh, just a basic overview of what was possible. Uh, so even though the resources that WHS has or a little out of our reach, uh, I thought it would be a cool idea to see what was possible and sort of aspire to do similar things in the future. What is your equipment like? Uh, yeah, uh, it's very minimal. We don't have a very big budget, so um, it's kind of mind-blowing to be down here and seeing all your guys' stuff. Uh, we don't have a lot yet, but we have a budget set, so we're going to be buying equipment in the near future. It's challenging to do anything new. Uh, yes, challenging to work with all new equipment, new software, new basic skills, new curriculum, uh, figure out the component parts of a good journalism class. What are you doing at Waltham High today? Kind of seeing what a, a more advanced kind of school news team would do and just kind of getting ideas and seeing what you guys have to kind of help us. Check out your space, check out what you guys have gotten like going on, seeing what we could do with like a bigger program. and. Uh, what stuff we have to look forward to. Did you learn anything from the seniors today? Yeah, it was actually really fun to work with them and we learned the different shots and making videos. Uh, they taught me a whole bunch of um, blending techniques to make the audio smoother and stuff and stuff that keeps the um, audience's attention to the movie. That's all we have for this week. I'm Regina Silvera. And I'm Steven Jardina. Go, Go Hawks! Hawks.